So here we're looking at T and P water heater pressure relief valve safety device blows off at 150 pounds pressure or it fit blows off at 210 degrees Fahrenheit this will open up on either temperature or pressure uh, obviously it's there to keep the uh, water heater from exploding if there was a failure uh, somewhere in the pressure increased or the temperature increased so I'm going to take this thing apart and we're going to look inside and see what makes this thing work before I get too much farther in it you can manually open this by lifting that up like that and that will open the valve and relieve the pressure and those of you that think that I have one that leaks and I can stop it from leaking by clamping across something like this, guess what? That don't work. It is a safety valve. There's a lot of things on, put on these things to make sure that you can't do something stupid. But what I wanted to look at first was uh, the temperature aspect of this thing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this rod up because if this rod gets hot it's going to open that valve and I'll just demonstrate how it works now I'm going to heat it up with a torch so it's going to get well above the 210 degrees just so we can see it now you can see that valve has opened just like it's supposed to so if the temperature gets high it goes up okay now here I've got it disassembled and the first thing I wanted to show you is this now you notice this is a brass tube right here it's coated with something I'm not sure what but inside it is a metal rod well that metal rod is going to push up and open this valve it actually goes in there fits in there like that and pushes up the valve and you can see now that thing fits down in there like that, fits there against this uh, brass piece, which looks pretty ugly. Doesn't even look like it's very well uh, made in there, but whatever. And then the shaft sticks out the top, and of course is going to push that. I got to looking a little closer at this probe. That's the probe that is in the bottom of the TMP. And it's a little different than I thought. You notice that the uh, the shaft here, that when it gets hot, it moves out. It didn't move quite like a bimetal would. Bimetal is fairly predictable in the amount of movement there is. This did not do that. It kind of jerked almost. And so I took it apart. And lo and behold, it's not anything like what I thought it was. Here's a shaft here. There's a spring. Now this spring is trying to push this thing down. There's a piston right here. And there's goo. Now, I don't know what the goo is. But it's softer when it's hotter so that may have something to do with it I guess it's possible this could have water in it it doesn't seem right to me but what seems to happen is pressure builds up inside here and pushes this piston up against the spring and probably this goo here has to sort of melt before the piston can come up. Now, it does come back down, but if you heat it quite a bit, it doesn't. It just stays, goes way out here someplace and just stays there. So, uh, I would think this would be a one-use sort of thing, but it doesn't appear to be. Because I have had it move back and forth when I overheated it a little bit with a torch 
but it's a little different than I thought. It is not a bimetal. It's just a shaft coming down here that's spring-loaded to keep it down. And when this stuff melts, uh, and maybe there's a gas in here, I don't know. You know, it doesn't seem like it would be, but uh, it will put up enough pressure. You know, there may be a gas down here. Like I said, there might be water or something. Once this loosens and allows the uh, piston to move up, this stuff melts. It moves up, and then uh, it comes back down, but it doesn't always come back down. If you overheat it, it won't come back down. So there's something to do with this goo in here that uh, is probably melting. Pressure's increasing back here, and it pushes that thing up. A little goofy. Not sure I absolutely still understand it, but it does appear to be something to do with pressure down here. And this uh, this goo here, which is kind of like silicone, of uh, melting. Anyway, that's how that thing works. And you can see how everything fits in there. The spring, of course, pushing down there. And, of course, this shaft could move up and open it. Pretty trouble-free valve. Uh, they tend to weep quite a bit. When they start weeping, about all you can do is throw them away. You can try flush them a little bit. Good luck at that working. Okay, one other thing I'd like to show you on this valve, just for the heck of it. Uh, remember I told you you could not clamp this down uh, to another part of the valve and actually stop this thing from uh, safetying out? The reason you can't is right there. Now, if you can see that, you got to look close. There's a little space right there. And this valve seat right here is free to move up about an eighth of an inch right there. So if I did clamp this down so it held, this would still move up about an eighth of an inch. And that's enough. This is, I think, 100,000 BTUs that it'll dump. And that's enough to dump uh, that pressure out. Simple little valve. Uh, pretty much tough to make it not work. Uh, the biggest problem with them is they, uh, they start weeping, which means there's garbage in the uh, seat right there. And that's about the only thing that goes wrong with these things. Should they be replaced every time you replace a water heater? Sure. I mean, it's it's not going to fail, but uh, I guess it's possible it could. So, you know, cheap insurance. So that's a T&P. Nothing special about it, is there? That's it on this one.